Hi, my name is Taha Zuhair and uh, today I'm going to be presenting to you this paper about um, a priority setting uh, kind of analysis on implementing the 2030 Agenda Goals, uh, the United Nations Goals. Um, so I've already highlighted some of the most important parts. But the abstract and uh, the introduction are pretty much talking about the, the SDGs. There are 17 sustainable development goals and there are 169 targets associated with them. But in this paper, uh, they're only focusing on 34 um, targets, two targets per goal. So, um, they want to have a systemic view of the of the of all the goals and how they can advise governments on how to uh, start working on these goals by priority setting or understanding how these goals interact with one another. So in the past, uh, the interaction between the the goals was mostly binary. It's either beneficial or adverse. Um, if one goal was not uh, automatically or, or systematically helping the progress of another goal. Um, so the analysis is, is done at the level of targets. So for, for each goal we have two targets that's where the analysis is done is not on the on the level of goals we're not comparing goals and goals we're comparing targets uh, because targets are much more specific and that's where the interactions are discerned and we can make out that there's a difference between between the the goals and um since we took 34 targets, two targets per goal. We have 34 by 33 interactions to analyze. We have 33 here because we we don't want we're not interested in, or it's not logical to analyze the interaction between one goal and itself. So um, that's why we have 1122 interactions to be analyzed. The authors, the four of them, they. Um, divided this by four and try to analyze this by themselves. They said that it's very difficult to cover all 169 targets and it's not, it's probably not feasible. Um, so that's what they stuck to just 34 targets. Um, but they're moving beyond the binary uh, benefiting versus adverse kind of perspective into a uh, synergy versus trade-off. Um, th this is pretty much the old way of doing it. Now they want to move forward. Uh, Nelson and others in 2016 proposed a seven-point typology of the nature of interactions ranging from cancelling, if goals are cancelling one another, sorry, targets, or counteracting one another, it's minus two, it's better than cancelling, but it's it's worse than constraining, making it difficult for one another, uh, consistent, when there's no significant interaction, enabling, when one target is enabling the other, reinforcing, when a target is reinforcing the other, and indivisible, plus three if if, um, if good progress on one target is actually giving us high progress on the other. They worked with the, after they figured out all the numbers from minus three up to plus three, they put all the, the values on this uh, color coded cross impact matrix uh, to analyze the relationships. They also looked at the sum of the, the column sum as well as the row sum. Um, most often, 
expert judgments are used for collecting the data. These are the targets. So, 1 3 is a target that belongs to the goal number 1. 1 5 is another target that belongs to the goal number 1. Uh, 2 2 belongs to 2. 2 4 belongs to 2 as well. 34 in total uh, amongst all the 17 uh, goals of the 2030 agenda. And these are the, the scale. The, the different values that they've given these interactions uh, ranging from minus 3 to plus 3 with a bunch more details on what they mean by enabling, consistent, constraining, counteracting, cancelling, reinforcing or indivisible. They also did not want to have like uh, one target as an entry point to analyze the system, but they wanted to see everything as a whole. Um, because the previous attempts actually were doing this. Um, analyzing one-on-one -on -one interactions from one sector to others, which do not actually account for systemic effects. So systemic effects is what this paper is uh, focused on actually. So they divided the 1122 interactions between the four co-authors like I've mentioned earlier. They've each made an expert judgment of the scoring of the interaction based on a basic reading of the literature and prior knowledge. So all these four authors, they've uh, read some books, I guess, some literature, could be books, papers, newspapers, I mean, anything that could help them and prior knowledge, uh, which could absolutely be highly biased. And uh, later on, they're also going to use network theory to um, try and... and uh, later on, they're, they're even going to be using uh, clustering. Uh, network theory, what is it? It's basically a network is a structure consisting of a set of nodes also called vertices, and a set of links, links between nodes, uh, also called edges connecting some of the nodes. Um, so if you have uh, a network G uh, with N nodes and L links, um, so if you have A, B, C as nodes, the links could be A, B and B to C. They don't have to all be connected. They don't have to necessarily be connected. Additional features could be added to the network structure like the direction of the links. Um, if the... They have an example here actually. In a social network if Adam knows who Bob is but Bob does not know who Adam is then there is a directed link from Adam to Bob. If they both know each other let's call it just a bi-directional arrow or um, link. Another concept here is the weight of the links. So you could have different weights between the nodes. Uh, some links are heavier than others. Some links are more important than others. Uh, an example, the example that they've given here uh, in a trade network, the link representing German exports to the US is a link with higher weight than the link representing German export to Finland. Germans export more stuff to the US than they do to Finland. So if you want to represent this on an network structure, then you definitely need to have um, a bigger link represented uh, when talking about German exports to the United States. And sometimes you have more than one link between nodes. You have two nodes, it does not necessarily mean that you have only one link between them. So and in a network of airports, for instance, there are many airlines, airline companies flying between Heathrow and uh, Schiphol, Amsterdam. So, these are some of the properties that we could find in, in networks actually. And uh, coming back here, um, they are going to discuss the results, uh, the links within the network, their string, direction, 
everything is visualized and they're also going to look further into the most positive and most negative interactions. Um, later on, they will all also be looking at second order interactions. We're going to talk about that in a moment. And finally, they present how targets from clusters that reinforce each other and have shared interests that encourage collaboration amongst different actors, government act actors in, in this case. So the first thing, the cross-impact matrix. What the scoring mean is if progress is made on targets X, which is on the row side, how does this influence progress on targets Y, which is on the column side? And um, the, it also does not mean that uh, the interaction that would emerge from fully achieving it does not mean that if you have a higher number then uh, if, a, if, a, if a target happens then it's gonna have a plus three or plus two effects on another target it does not have to be fully achieved to have any effects actually they're just measure, measuring progress any progress is good progress and, and how that progress is affecting other targets is what we're measuring here. Uh, examples, for instance, targets 4.1, uh, which is about primary and secondary education, is uh, helping two other targets, 1.3 and 1.5. 1.3 is about social protection systems. Uh, it's, it's been enabled. Which is which means it has a plus one, and for targets one point five, it it's being reinforced, and I think that's a uh, plus two, if I'm not mistaken. And I I must uh, state here that the authors are um, talking about Sweden. So if you were to do the same analysis in another country with different people, uh, of course. Perhaps as an approach, it could be a good approach to use, uh, but do not use the results as is. And perhaps that's something that's that we're going to conclude our uh, uh, presentation with here. Another target that they're discussing here, and uh, how it's it's being influenced or influencing other targets. Of the total number of links that we have between these uh, uh, 34 targets, only 4% are red. Only 4% have a minus 3. So uh, a lot of uh, positive interactions, more or less, between the, the targets. The targets having the highest count of negative interactions with other targets are targets 17, 11. Exports from developing countries. They have 18 negative interactions. 7.2, renewable energy. It has 13 negative interaction. And 13.2, it has 8 negative interactions. And the net influence from a target on all other targets is shown by the row sum right here. This is the row sum, 25 for instance, is the influence that target 1.3 is um, subjecting all of these targets uh, on. So you might have a plus, perhaps this is a plus 3 right here. Uh, this might be a plus 1 and this is a plus 2. This yellow one is a 0. So the net influence is the total right here. And as we can see, uh, 1711 for instance has a bunch of uh, negative interactions here I would say a couple of minus trees so it's it's normal that the uh, net influence would be negative so um, progress what this means progress on target 1711 is actually um, not helping the progress of other targets and what this is this is this is starting to look more more or less systemic so it's not just the interaction between one or the other when we look at the row sum and the column sum it's starting to look more or less systemic so um, if we take again this 
target 1.3 and how it is influenced by other targets we can see that it's more or less pretty positive 26 this means that progress on other targets is actually making good progress on 1.3 uh, we don't have a negative one here we actually do right here 17.11 again uh, not only progress on 1711 is actually making progress on all the other goals more or less difficult in a systemic perspective but also progress in other goals is making 1711 uh, difficult to progress on with a minus 2 and that's this is what they're explaining here a high column sum suggests that a target is greatly positively influenced by other targets and negative column sum means that progress in other targets makes it more difficult to reach the target and also the sum makes us uh, lose some information here because uh, it doesn't tell us if the influence is resulting from a strong influence by a few targets or weak influenced by many negative or positive targets again so we get we get kind of an idea on the systemic um, perspective but we're losing some information then um, they said that this cross impact matrix has a drawback it has some negative points it does not provide enough information to guide priority setting where to focus action so one of the goals of this analysis is priority setting. We want to know as a government in Sweden, for instance, uh, which goal or target should we start working on first? Which should come second? Which should come third? Um, is there any uh, cooperation between targets that we need to focus on? That's, that's that's the drawback of this cross-impact matrix. And then they started using network theory, of course, uh, including the direction of links, uh, their weights. Um, and they could be signed, they could be positive or negative. Um, What they're saying is that the network does not contain any additional information compared to this cross-impact matrix. But the network visualization is better in communicating the complexity of the problem at hand. So we're not adding any more information compared to the cross-impact matrix. However, displaying the information in a network, visualizing, visualizing it in a network is actually helping us uh, understand the complexity of the problem. So, um, figure three has a bunch of positive and negative uh, uh, links, but yeah, as well as, uh, I mean, positive, all the positive ones, plus one, plus two, plus three, <coughs> excuse me as well as the negative ones this, the dashed ones are the negative so this red one is a, a minus three uh, I think there's also an orange and the green ones the, the darker the green the, the stronger the influence so 11.2 we see that we have a link it's going towards 13.2 this means that 11.2 is influencing 13.2 in a positive manner and it, it seems like it's a plus two or plus three uh, kind of influence uh, they also use the sub network of indivisible indivisible interactions they took only the plus three interactions the way we could see this network the sub network is the bigger the circle the more influence that circle has over other targets and the smaller it is, the less influence it has over others. Like 8.5, no arrows or links coming out of it. Similarly, 17.13, nothing coming out of it. This one, only one. That's why it's a little bit bigger than this one. But the, the, the biggest one I would say is this one. 16.6 and 13.1, you can see a lot of the things, the links coming. So 
this means 13.1 has uh, along with 16.6 .6, the most influence over other targets here we can see a bidirectional link so 16.4 is positively influencing 16.6 .6, and 16.6 .6 is positively influencing 16.4 and since we only took the plus 3 interactions this means that both have a plus 3 influence on the other the other information here is the darker the color the more influenced by others the target is so this is the most influenced or positively influenced target by others and again we only took plus three interactions so all the arrows or the links that you see they're actually plus three interactions so this is the most influenced or positively influenced targets uh, by other targets similarly uh, they've done something similar with uh, the negative ones but here instead of taking just minus three they took uh, minus ones and minus twos and uh, sometimes they had to combine the strength of um, the, the strengths of the of the arrows so if you have minus two minus two so I would I would think this has a minus two over this and this has a minus two over this then that would be a minus four for instance that's just an example I would probably think this is the minus four um, if it's minus one and minus two or minus two and minus one then it's a minus three and they coded it with an orange color if they have minus one minus one or minus two zero then it's minus two uh, I think it's also orange sorry this is the orange this is red and this is dark red for interactions that have a minus one total meaning minus one zero or zero minus one then they've used uh, a peach color again likewise uh, the 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 smaller the circle the less influence um, it has over others and the bigger the circle the more influence it has over others like 1711 it has influence over 2 4 13 11 uh, 7 2 it's bi-directional it has influence over 12.5 and 13.2 14.4 8.5, 1.5, 12.1, again another bidirectional um, link along with 8.4 as well as 10.1. So the bigger the influence on others, the bigger the circle. And the more influenced that target is by other targets, the darker the color. So as we can see, 7.2, uh, it does not have influence over other targets as much as 1711 has so it has some it has 6.5 6.6 15.2 1711 uh, nothing here but 15.5 uh, so it's a little bit smaller than 1711 but it's still dark it's very dark because it, it's been influenced a lot by, uh, by by many targets in this uh, In figure 6a and 6b they are going to look at a single target and then study in the neighboring targets but without uh, considering how that neighboring targets in turn interacts with other targets so that would be like second order we're only going to look at first order interactions in this um, in the next two figures and um, but this is not 
This is not good. And they explain why. Progress in the four top influencing targets would render achievements of six other targets more difficult to achieve and prioritizing them might prove a counterproductive strategy. We need to understand its systemic impact within the influence network. What does that mean? So, if we take 13.2, again the color code in here, uh, the green arrows are uh, positive influences, the thicker the, the, the link, um, the higher the influence, and the red one is, uh, is a negative one actually. So 13.2, this target, it's being influenced by a lot of other targets. What they're saying is that, should we just focus on 13.1, 11.2, 12.1, and 9.4? Because that would necessarily help us make progress on 13.2. They say, they say no, because it could be that by prioritizing these four, you're actually uh, undermining maybe six other targets, which are in turn influencing 13.2 negatively. This is why um, we need to understand its systemic impact within the influence network. This is this is this takes us to another concept where they're going to look at second order interactions and how. Uh, influence ripples through the network just like a wave here what other targets 13.2 is immediately influencing and how that influence is again uh, similar color code in here uh, just a second let me see what's uh, written here or unhighlighted. Yeah, so this is talking about second order uh, interactions. Yeah, basically they're saying it could be that you have a very strong influence over another target, a very positive effect, highly positive effect. But this other target has few and or weak positive connections so the positive effect wears out quickly so you have a plus three to a neighboring target, but on the other targets you have plus one zero maybe negative ones so you need to understand the systemic impact but many strong positive connections to other targets with the same characteristics what are these same characteristics other positive connections to other neighboring targets, meaning second order and third order. They give a high and positive multiplier effect. Conversely, in an opposite way, a strong positive connection to a target that in turn exerts much negative influence on other targets in second order um, level makes a negative system systemic impact. So if you were here and you're just focusing on this 7.3 and you're thinking it's a positive impact that you're making on 7.3 but 7.3 let's say has many negative um, influences on other targets then you're not making much progress this is why it's important to uh, calculate the net influence on the second order network for all 34 targets in our selection uh, figure 7 shows the conceptual idea of moving from only considering first order interactions to second order interactions this is kind of moving from this to something a little bit better. Uh, this is the first influence of a target on its closest neighbors. And uh, this is the, the influence from I's neighbors on their neighbors, weighted by a factor of half. We're multiplying this by half and we have a uh, a sum of the second uh, second order influences. Considering second order interactions thus seems to make less of a difference for targets with very large or very little influence in the first order network, whereas the effect is more pronounced for targets ranking somewhere in the middle. I'm gonna explain this a little bit in, in, in a short while. So what are they saying here? 
B, C, D and E are first order interactions of A. While G and F, for instance, are second order interactions of A. Total influence from target A on first order network is 2. Uh, how is that calculated? Calculating the total influence of A on the first order network, we simply sum up the arrows in the inner circle. Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, that's plus 3. And we have a negative 1, that's 2. That's what the total influence target A has on the first order network. How do we do it for the second order network? For that, uh, we consider the full chain of influence from A to F and G via C, for instance this one. A's influence on F is not equal to the sum of the two links between A and C and C and F for two reasons. First, because the AC link is negative. It makes progress in C more difficult and the positive influence that C would exert on F if progress was made less likely. So, if there's progress on A, the progress on F and G is less likely because of this negative link here. Second, because influence weakens the further away from target A it is exerted. The farther away we move from A, the, the weaker the influence. Calculating A's influence on F, we account for those effects by reducing the weight of the second order links by one half before multiplying the second order links with the first order link and adding this to the first order influence. So this is why they're using one half. They're diluting the these targets that are on the second order. Doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. Everything is multiplied by one half. And they're multiplying the second order links with the first order link. What this means... We have 1 plus 1, they put them here. We're multiplying that with the first order link. That's minus 1. Before adding again, adding this minus 1 here. Um, same thing was done here for instance. The 1 is here, we've added this at the end. We're reducing everything by one half, and we're also uh, multiplying everything by one. It's not uh, visible here, but since the this is a positive interaction, so there's a one there, and then we have a sum of these one minus one minus one. It's right here. So this is the influence on the second order network. We just have to add two minus two, that's zero, plus one, that's one, plus one half, uh, that's one and a half. So when they did this, they found that when they take into consideration second order interactions, the scoring actually changes uh, and a lot of the targets change places. Um, It should be noted here that the rank does not show the distribution of positive and negative links that make up a target's influence. So it could be that a target has a lot of negative links, maybe a lot of minus ones or zeros, and a few uh, plus threes, and that's why it's high ranked. So a high ranking target may still hold negative links that merit special attention by policymakers. You could look at a at a target at uh, the, the first spot, but it still has some negative links that you need to take care of. Merits special attention by policymakers. You don't just take a, a high ranked target and say, oh, you know what? We should just start working on this because it looks like the, the first thing that we should work on. Priority setting has been done. 
They're, they've also added that it is worthwhile to also account for third order neighbors and beyond perhaps. The ideal would be to rank the targets according to, to, the, to its interactions. Actually it should be to their interactions with the complete network. And not just first order, second order, third order. Um, since we are dealing with a complicated network that has multiple links between targets and is signed and weighted, the application of different centrality measures uh, as implemented in the standard software such as PAGIC, uh, GFI and Mathematica is not straightforward and should be subject to further research. These are software uh, solutions that help you visualize networks with all the characteristics that we've mentioned, uh, be it links or weights or uh, sign, positive, negative. Since they're gonna be uh, introducing the, the concept of clusters right after this table, uh, it's, it's worthwhile to perhaps go back to this in perhaps a minute from now. These are the targets when only considering their first order network. The net influence here is 51, 43, 40, 31, 30. We could see that on the second order network, um, we have exactly more or less the same, especially in these three first spots. But on the first spot, we could see that 12.5, uh, which is a target that, that is related to waste, has actually jumped from number six. It was ranked six and it jumped to number four when, it's, when we started accounting for the second order network. So this is another way of uh, prioritizing these targets and which ones policymakers should start, should start working on um, earlier than others. Now they're gonna introduce the concept of clusters. Um, which, are, which are concentrations of nodes. Um, there's no universally accepted quantitative definition of a cluster. Intuitively, it is rather easy to think of a cluster as a collection of nodes in which the density of links is higher than the average density of the network. In reality, when actually identifying clusters, they are most often algorithmic, algorithmically algorithmically, sorry about that's defined, meaning that the set of clusters is simply the products of certain algorithms without a precise definition. So algorithms take care of defining clusters. And you define a cluster by finding a group of targets or nodes, uh, so to speak, especially if we're talk, talking about a network in a more uh, ab abstract way, the more goals or targets have links between them, the more likely they are to form a cluster, uh, especially if they have a lot of links between them, more than the, than the average density of, of links that, that is found in, in the rest of the network. Targets forming a cluster make a good coalition. They influence each other positively. They have a shared interest in handling the negative links to other clusters. There are other, uh, there are several algorithms for detecting clusters. Um, for reviews, you could see, for example, the, these papers mentioned here. And the quality of these algorithms is often assessed via a measure known as modularity. Little attention has been paid to the problem of detecting clusters in signed networks. Only recent, recently has this functionality started to be implemented into software packages for network analysis. So they, in the past, this software did not take into consideration uh, the fact that some networks have signs that could be positive or negative, and therefore they did not, they did not account, um, did not take that into account when um, trying to form clusters. So the idea on identifying clusters in signed networks is to find groups of targets with few internal negative links and instead position the negative links between the clusters. 
So when they ran the algorithm and they uh, they came up with the clustering, that's what we're going to see in figure eight. All the clusters, they have only positive interactions between them. The only negative interaction that sits within one of the clusters is actually between targets 7.2 and 7.3 in the red cluster. All other negative interactions sit between targets that belong to different clusters. And they colored them differently. There are blue and yellow clusters. They uh, are related to the social sustainability ambitions of Swedish policies. Uh, green clusters are related to environmental sustainability and the red cluster is the technology and innovation cluster. Individual tar targets within the clusters crisscross current ministry lines and an actor may be both a member of the yellow, red, green and blue cluster. When they're talking about ministries here, it's a ministry from the government. Um, so what they mean is that within the clusters, uh, it's not like one cluster can be worked on by one area of one government. The same cluster seems like it requires a lot of cooperation and collaboration between multiple ministries in a give, given government. Oh. <clears throat> this is the red cluster, innovation and technology. This is the uh, sustainability cluster. And where is our negative uh, interaction that they were talking about? I think it was between 7.3 7.2. Yes, in the red cluster. So all the clusters, the blue ones, they only have positive interactions between them. The green ones, only positive interactions between them. The yellow ones, only positive interactions between them. The red ones, only positive interactions between them, except for this interaction between these two. This is how they formed clusters. They looked at which nodes have the biggest number of positive interactions between them. And they looked at common negative interactions. So maybe they have interact negative interactions with other clusters, with other nodes from other clusters, but not on the same cluster, except for this one. So this is the best that the clustering algorithm actually could do. Discussion of the findings. They found that these sustainable development goals are dominantly mutually supportive in the case of Sweden. Um, and they also, since they've done this uh, second order ranking, which is as deep as their analysis could go, they have found that progress in target 16.6, .6, effective institutions, and progress in target 12.1, sustainable, sustainable consumption and production, and progress in in, on targets 8.4 resource efficiency generate the most positive influence on the rest of the SDGs in Sweden. This is some systemic uh, decision-making perspective, priority setting, whatever you want to call it, because um, it's taking into consideration um, it's not comprehensive in the sense that they did not go beyond the second order interactions, but it's still uh, pretty good analysis and being strong influencers these targets drive progress on the 17 SDGs overall 16.6, 12.1 and 8.4 17.11 this is one of the problematic uh, targets as it receives very little support from other targets not only 1711, but that's the the worst of them. There's also 16.4. Um, they're they're also weakly. We also have weakly connected targets to the network, like 14.4 and 14.1 and 3.8. Their dependence on progress in other targets is low, and they have a lot of freedom to act independently. However, not benefiting from systemic effects 
they may need more targeted support. So it's not because these guys are not connected that we should not put them in the our top priority. Um, because they 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 they're not connected, they're not benefiting from the positive uh, effects of the network. So they might need more targeted supports. That's one of the findings. Um, Seventeen eleven. This is this is the worst, along with seven point two. They were found to both have a strong negative influence on other targets, and be negatively influenced by other targets, the network. 13.1, 11.1, 7.3 and 6.5 are five other targets found to either exert much negative influence or be negatively influenced. But of course, uh, not as bad as 17.11 and 7.2. Um, prioritizing progress in targets exerting negative influence on the network could still be a desirable strategy for political reasons or because negative influence can easily be overcome. So even though this analysis, what the authors are saying is that even though we ranked 1711 at the bottom, it does not mean that it should be forsaken. It could be a different strategy that policymakers in Sweden or any other country that's doing the analysis would want to actually um, start with the negative ones or have, have more uh, focused work on the negative ones because either the negative influence can easily be overcome or because of political reasons. The, the authors also identified four clusters um, that are tightly positively connected and um, but within each cluster it's uh, a lot of interactions that crisscross ministries which means that a given cluster could be worked on by many ministries and this brings us to this point here this suggests that bridges for collaboration are needed between ministries the positive links between the targets that they are responsible for make an excellent entry point to foster this as they highlight their shared interests and how they would benefit from progress in all targets um, as for having a systemic overview of the entire network this is not something to be expected from ministries um, in their daily work that would be the responsibility of coordinating functions like the prime minister's office the ministry should only uh, work on internal matters in conclusion uh, the approach is intuitively simple and can be applied in almost any country Weaknesses. The potential weakness of the approach is that the quality of the analysis depends on the scoring of interactions entered into the cross-impact matrix. So the approach is vulnerable to deficiencies in the scoring approach. How these authors scored things, it's not like how other people might score them. Even within the same country, reading the same literature and having the same prior knowledge. But... Um, This could be made more robust through a variety of strategies and depending on the purpose. For example, the data inputs could be reviewed by independent scientists or policymakers or verified through systemic literature reviews. Systematic, sorry. What they're saying is that you could bring independent scientists or policymakers uh, to look at your cross impact matrix and tell you whether it's good or not. Um, but again, these experts and independent scientists and such, they could have some conflicts. So there are more specific methodologies to arrive at a consensus among the experts, such as the Delphi method. But they have some other uh, solutions there. The key strength of the approach is not as, as a scientific assessment methodology, but as a tool to support policy making. It, indu it induces sectors to look outside their turf and think systematically about how they influence and are influenced by others. A turf is an area, uh, if you don't know this, uh, this term, it's more, more like slang, I would say. Uh, it's it's uh, like my turf is like my area, my block. It's not 
it's not a very pleasant word um, but the approach actually helps people look beyond just their nose beyond just their immediate front yard uh, into the systemic overview of the entire system you could also develop uh, several variations of the cross impact matrix if there are large uncertainties if you have large conflicts between these experts you could have different cross impact matrices um, how scoring variations play out systemically would be a useful sensitivity analysis However, our involvement in recent applications of the scale has shown that there can be a risk of confusing the scale as a typology coding. The qualitative nature of an interaction with the scale of strength of an interaction. The scale used here does not measure the strength of interaction. When, whereas when we are saying that a target is influencing another target by plus three, that's not the strength of the interaction. It's just some coding, how they, they coded their uh, qualitative research. They, they, haven't, they have a, a, a um, representation in their mind of what plus 3 means and what plus 2 means and what minus 3 means and what minus 2 means. And they coded that. When they read the literature, they understood how the interaction works between two targets and they coded that into numbers. But it's not a scale, it's not like a ruler. It's not a thermometer that tells you, oh, it's one degree higher or lower. Uh, because the authors were involved in some uh, recent application of the scale and they showed, they, 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 they have seen that people were using the scale as a, as a ruler and saying, oh, this is like 10 inches higher or a quarter low or something, which is not true. This is why I put this in red and, and this, this is their information affirmation this is their statement that the scale used here does not measure the strength of the interaction they also talked about asymmetrical The method applied would also allow for exploring how lack of lack of progress, also known as regression, on a target would influence other targets, assuming that this is not always symmetrical to the influence generated by progress. For example, in some areas, lack of progress may generate more negative impact than the positive impact generated by progress, or vice versa. What this means again, if there is no progress, it does not mean that instead of plus 3 you're gonna get minus 3 or it's not symmetric it's asymmetric meaning if you do progress you could get plus 3 and if you don't do progress you might get minus 1 or 0 so it's not necessarily symmetrical this, this is what they're saying in this part here and vice versa uh, if you have something that's rated minus 3 and instead of not having progress in it, you're actually making some progress and the influence is actually positive, you're getting a plus one. It's not necessarily that because you have progress, you're going to get the, the, the opposite of the effect or the score that was given. So if they say it's a minus three and you're getting some progress, it does not necessarily mean that you're getting a plus three. And this is the end of the paper. Uh, it has responded to the expressed desire by the United Nations and several governments to treat the Sustainable Devel Development Goals as an indivisible whole, as a system. Uh, the type of insights generated makes plan and priority setting for implementing the SDGs more likely to be effective. Thank you for following. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, um, you can leave them in the, in the comments section. Thank you.